mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at Where my mom's at podcast With Christina P Thank you for downloading this episode Thank you for watching us on YouTube Subscribe now so that you always get these episodes Okay <laughs> Let's do some business. Before I get started, I would like to announce I have extended my residency at Flappers Comedy Club in Burbank. That means every Thursday, more or less, unless I'm on the road, through December now, I will be doing the YooHoo Room at Flappers in Burbank. It's a very intimate setting. There's only like 50, ta 50 seats. And mm -hmm. I like to just work stuff out. And I really um, like to see your beautiful faces. So come see me there. October 3rd through 5th, Nashville, Tennessee at Zany's. October 17th, I'm in Irvine, California at the Irvine Improv. October 25th, Pasadena at the Ice House. I'm doing two shows, the 8 and 10 o'clock show. And then November 22nd and 23rd, I'm doing Seattle and then Portland. Tickets at Christina P. Online. I'll be announcing 2020 dates pretty soon. Going to crazy places. Um, but first, I am so excited to announce my guest today you guys have overwhelmingly requested her <laughs> miss Ela klein Whoa. not only let me do your credits not only are you half of the h3 podcast yes. with your husband mm -hmm. what's his name who cares you <laughs> are um, ethan klein ethan klein i love ethan more than yeah. anything mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur you are the i'm a entrepreneur a what <laughs> What's that? One of the entrepreneurs. A want, but you're legit. <laughs> yeah, I like to, I like to a give myself a hard time. You're a mom, a mom, a mom entrepreneur. A mom entrepreneur. <laughs> That's the next sweatshirt you're gonna do. Um, if you're not familiar with her brand, it's called Teddy Fresh, and I'm rocking it <laughs> yes. now because I love your gear. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and also, you just became an American. So yeah. hey, I America. just had, had my oath ceremony yesterday yesterday yeah what did you go downtown to wilshire yeah the convention center and did you get a hot dog after no did they play neil diamonds they're coming to america they played something like that yeah they did that yeah. for mine yeah. <laughs> it was so corny and then we had a clip from trump saying, oh you're very special <laughs> i'm surprised he would do the video yeah i didn't think he was pro-immigrant i i guess it's part of the job yeah well, congratulations. Um, I expect you now to put on about 150 pounds. <laughs> Thank you. Now that you're one of us. Yeah. What I love most about you, um, I'm so astounded at all you've accomplished, is, is because you're an immigrant too. Like this is not your first language, English. This is not your first culture. And to come here and like, you're hugely successful with Teddy <laughs> Fresh and with everything you do. Thank you. And on top of all that, you're a new mom. Yeah. I mean, could life be any crazier? For you right <laughs> it's now? really crazy right now. Yeah. Yeah. How's it going so but far? <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess I like being busy because if I'm, when I'm bored, I get depressed. So yeah. it's kind of like a crazy cycle of waiting, like really wanting to be like, have this boring day of doing nothing. But then <laughs> like, I want to kill myself by the end yes. of the day. Yeah. A hundred percent. I go <clears> through <throat> that too, where if I'm not being productive, I feel like I'm a loser. I'm yeah. not doing enough. And then I get into a self-loathing spiral, mm -hmm. um, even on um, <laughs> vacations. Yes. Uh, it takes me about <laughs> three days before I can give myself permission oh. to enjoy stuff. And I'm working on that too. Oh, it's the worst. I kind of had that with you. Like you took me to <laughs> a fun day yeah. and I was like, are we allowed? Like what's going on here? Yeah. We're just chilling and Ethan is watching the baby and the dogs. Yeah. It's which great. was pretty badass of him but i just yeah i have a hard time like letting go and enjoying something isn't that i know and you know what's crazy is now that i'm 43 years old i realize that i don't have many great years left do you know what i'm saying like yeah once you hit 50 i feel like yeah what like it's you're like i'm gonna die <laughs> and like <laughs> i'm practically dead so i'm like i should really start enjoying things more than i have been i should really take a lot more days off you know because like yeah you're not going to be on your deathbed and be stoked about how many cities i did 
You know, like I'm, I did Tampa. I fucking did <laughs> Toledo this year. I know, like, I know. It's like we're always on this like chase. Yeah. But and, and, yeah, when you start to kind of think, well, what am I chasing? Yeah. And when does it stop? Yeah. Is I guess I'm. I feel like I'm 31 now. So I feel like the 30s are going to be like those chasing years. Yeah, hell yeah. But then I wonder, like, am I going to be able to say no at some point to... Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because the 30s are the chasing years. De- I lost a decade just doing stand-up. <laughs> like, I, like, legit. Yeah. My 30s were uh, in hotels. Every story <laughs> I have is like... And then I was in this hotel in the Midwest and this happened. <laughs> um, yeah, and then your 40s, you can be more selective because Mm -hmm. now you've established yourself a little bit and that's good you should yeah it shouldn't be as much of a grind and then talking about mom stuff yeah um i kind of started thinking lately because you hear about like for example my mom she didn't work when she had us and then she started working just when i was like old enough to go to school so i've been thinking lately like i'm gonna get a nanny now because we can't work we just like, can't know the new one well how old is your baby work. so people listening know three and a half months what? Yes. so you're like out of the newborn newborn yeah. the first I 90 days take your shit off yeah we yes, won't I'll do that off. thing <laughs> um you're out of the the newborn fog kind of yeah and um so w- i always had this idea like we both mostly work from home so when we have a kid we're gonna be able to like stay at home and still work and kind of were flexible so i always thought it was going to be like that but you really can't get any work done i feel like when, you, <laughs> when you i mean it's so it's hard impo- like, like i had this illusion too like oh yeah you'll have the baby and then the baby naps and that's when i'll check emails it, or write jokes it's not like it takes me an hour sometimes to put him to sleep right. and then he'll nap for 20 minutes and then shredder right. barks and it's over <laughs> like he wakes up from the barking right or and you he, need to sleep and you can't dive into work in like 20 minutes and then snap out of it. And so I'm looking to get a nanny now. And then I started to have this guilt feelings of like, am I, should I not work right now? And should I just dedicate like being at home? Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I can't, I don't think I can do it. That's like, I think every mother's conundrum in mm-hmm. this era. And especially if you have children later in life, like you've yeah. got this whole there's so many good things and bad things to having children later. Yeah. You know, like one, you're just established. You've got more resources, which is yeah. great. But on the other hand, you're more established. And you want to keep it going. Yeah. Like you're yeah. not going to give up. I can't give up a 15 year career in stand up because yeah. I have children. That, that's such a colossal waste to me. Mm-hmm. I know. I guess the key is to try to find like a balance. A balance. You know, I definitely pulled back on how much I work. I, yeah. I mean, I do your mom's house and I do this show and then at Which, night I'll do like the comedy store or the Burbank mm-hmm. or whatever but that's here and my kids are asleep mm-hmm. it's not that crazy for me mm-hmm. but I don't know yeah I don't I'm know. working on finding that balance like before uh, I was about to give birth I like while I was pregnant I started hiring more people basically for Teddy Fresh so that I started to like hand off things that I was doing yeah so that I can free myself and I feel like it's starting to pay off now. Like I'm starting to see that I don't need to be there for everything. Yeah. So. Well, you realize you're not that um, important to every, like that. I'm also a control (laughs) freak. Like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything in my house, I have to be the one in charge of. Yes. I have to order the groceries. I have to do the Amazoning. I have to do. And that was like, I I gave up a lot of that too. When Mm -hmm. I was pregnant with Julian, I was like, I can't, I just, I'm exhausted. Someone do it. I don't care how it gets done. Yeah. And then you realize, like, there is other people that can do shit. Like, and then <laughs> maybe it's not exactly how you would have done it, but right. so what? But it got done. Yeah. I know. And free time is... Everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Outsourcing. We talk about that a lot on this show. Is mm-hmm. like, can you hire a, someone to clean your house for 40 bucks a week? Mm-hmm. Fucking do it. Yes. Can you, can you do Instacart? Do it. Can you hire someone if, you know, a nanny you trust and you adore? Like, our nanny's been with us since um, Ellis was four months old. So we've known mm. this broad for all... She's really the only other person I trust besides yeah. my husband and myself. Yeah. Like, 100% trust her. Yeah. You it's going to take a lot to trust someone. It's Especially so with your scary. first. Ooh, with that first baby? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So let's talk about the beginning. Because you're in it. We talk about the dark forest. That's what yes. Leanne Kreischer 
coined I saw the beginning yeah the the dark forest <laughs> and um i get a lot of emails from pregnant women and from women who just started on their journey of motherhood mm -hmm. and there really is this unspoken sorority i guess we all go through the it's dark forest so dark it really <laughs> is it really is i know it's so fucked up and nobody tells you no one tells you anything i i kept telling ethan like everyone was asking me what are you planning for delivery what are your plans for delivery <laughs> But whatever, water delivery, whatever. I don't care. Yeah, we were gonna it's, show up and the and delivery be in the was nothing. Oh. The, the, the delivery is just the beginning of the nightmare yeah. that is about to follow. A hundred percent. And you can't really plan much anyway. Whatever happens, happens. It comes out, yeah. and then it starts. That's what you need to talk about. That yeah. was our first week was awful. Our first month was awful. Our first two months were pretty awful. Like. <laughs> It's horrible. Yeah. Well, you're right because so everybody focuses on your pregnancy and your especially your first time being pregnant. It's so jarring. It's so different. Yeah. So it's what are so, you craving? Yeah, yeah, and that's the fun part. But like, but it's, it's like it's out. It's all out the door. It doesn't one, fucking matter. Yeah, because once that matter. kid comes out, and what people don't really tell you too is like you're exhausted. You've been pregnant yes. for nine months. You've been in labor for how many days? You haven't slept really since you got pregnant. And now you're expected to be in this broken ass condition. Your vag is ripped up. Yeah. You're in pain because your uterus is contracting. You're learning yes. to breastfeed in this condition. You're taking care <sighs> of a newborn. It's like you're at your most broken point of existence. And they're like, yes. here, do this whole thing that you have no idea. And they're do. like, oh, and don't forget to eat really well. Because <laughs> if you want to produce milk, you got to eat really well. And it's like, I am barely walking. Yeah and barely taking care of the baby. And I'm supposed to also eat and I'm supposed to also sleep. No, nah, and that doesn't happen <laughs> when you're in three months, the first thing. No. So let's talk about your pregnancy but, and stuff. Okay. Let's start from the beginning and then we'll... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just talk about your experience because I think it helps the women listening um, so, to your stories. Yeah, go. I'm one of the... I'm the one that everyone hates. <laughs> I had an easy pregnancy. <laughs> and you didn't puke, no morning sickness. I don't puke in, in life Neither in general. Neither do I. Neither do oh, I. You, Not since really? 2003. Oh yeah, I have okay. a I have a severe phobia of it actually. Oh, I have a metaphobia, and I <laughs> like I I wouldn't eat certain <laughs> foods. I still won't eat certain foods that I believe will make me vomit. Oh wow, yeah, okay, that's real different. problems, <laughs> real problems. Like if I felt <laughs> nauseous, I would just hold it in. Like I probably so should have barfed. Yeah, I'm so really I don't sick. even feel nauseous. I don't wow. know what it feels like. That's great. Yeah, so I didn't have any morning sickness or all that stuff. <sighs> Amaze. Yeah, so that was all pretty easy for me. Back yes. pain? Not even the back pain? No. What? Ooh, back pain. Oh, it hurt. No, yeah, yeah. back pain, really bad. Yeah, it's fucked up. The worst. Were you able... Towards the end, it was like I could barely do yeah. anything. Did you have like sciatica and like where the pain shoots on your hips and like down your back of your thighs and all that? No, oh, it was that. just yeah. the back. And did you, um, were you able to sleep at all? I were was. You... Wow. Yeah, I fucking hate you. you yeah, know. I know. <laughs> I know. So, and I already lost all the weight. Yes. Everyone uh, hates me. Well, you've always yes. been very skinny. I know. You're very naturally thin. I, you know what? I stopped but it's, hating. It's so funny. It's like, <laughs> and I see the look in people's <laughs> eyes. They're like, they're like, what? You just had a baby and what? And I don't, I don't know. I don't want to sound. I, I understand. You can hate me. I understand the <laughs> frustration. I didn't do anything. It's just my genetics. Yes. And that's what it I is. found is that some bitches it's, be snapping back it's sooner. It's genetics. What yeah. can you do? Or and that's the benefit of having babies younger, like when people have them mm -hmm. in their twenties or whatever, your early thirties, your your body can really snap back. I think. Yeah. Better. So the pregnancy is easy. How was your relationship with Ethan at that time? Like, were you cranky? Were was he? Were you guys anxious? Um, we were fine. We were fine the whole way through pregnancy, Good. and then. Um, D from after delivery there w it was a little rough like the first week and then yeah. just everything is so hard and then also having to be nice to each other is hard it's almost know? impossible it's, everything in the beginning is hard yeah it's yeah. almost impossible to remember to be nice to your spouse in those first yeah couple months yeah I think, and it was yeah. his birthday like right uh, after and i didn't even have time to even think about that and i feel like it kind of felt bad that i wasn't like paying enough attention to him yeah. But um, I saved it in the last minute. You did? <laughs> what did you do? 
<laughs> I got him a nice pair of shoes and like a, I made him a cool card. Oh, well, see, then that's all you can be expected to do. Yeah. Every, I think people don't really comprehend the chaos that a newborn. Yeah. Is, like it's imagine it being who can do nothing without you. Like it's total dependence. And also you don't really understand the baby in the beginning. Mm. I feel like which was really hard for us. Like you think, oh, I'm the parent. I should <laughs> know the best. Right. And he should look at me and feel safe. And like it just it's not there yet. You don't feel any of those things. <laughs> um, like we just we barely even felt feelings towards him in the beginning. Like you don't feel it yet anything it's just a blur you're just <laughs> in chaos yeah. you're in triage <laughs> you're just trying to like keep this thing alive i remember feeling a lot of anxiety yeah like, we did not even know how to put ellis in the car seat to get him home from the yeah. hospital the yeah. nurse had to come out and show tom and i and we're like and that drive home from the hospital was just terror. oh my god it was so scary and he was crying and, <laughs> oh. and it's like you don't even know how to calm him down yet um the first moment that was the most surreal was right after labor and everything is done and they leave us with the baby in the room and they're like, okay, <laughs> that's it. So now you go off with your life and like, I had no idea what to do with him. What no is, clue. Like, you don't know anything. No, and I kind of wish it was like the because back in the old days, like when I was born in the 70s, mm -hmm. they would take that baby from the mother. Yeah put it in the nursery with yes. the other newborns and the nurses would look after that child for yeah. a day or two until mom recovered. So in Israel, they still do that. But I love it. So there's a new trend within the young people to request to stay with him. Because I, <laughs> I guess that with them taking him, there's a lot of cases where you'll see him crying and no one is there. That's fucked up. So, yeah. So it can be hard to see. Yeah, that's messed up too. I guess what they should do is assign a nurse to you. Mm -hmm. I would say then have like a 24 hour baby nurse or something yeah. so that mom can sleep. And then if the baby needs to feed, they just wake you up and give you the baby for like at least 48 hours just to get your yeah your life back together. I don't know. I guess some people have moms that can come and do that. <laughs> for them, you know what I mean? Right. So delivery was easy. Delivery was not as bad as I thought. Good. I feared it for many years. I almost didn't want to have kids because I was so afraid of delivery. What was the biggest fear for you? How is it going to come out? How? Yeah. yeah. Well, because you're so big, right? You're so big at the end yes. of your pregnancy. You're like, how is this going to come out of me? Yeah. <laughs> I know. But actually, once you understand, like the body really works and preparation for it the whole time and things move in your body yeah like the bones mm. move and literally it makes space for it to come out <laughs> which, which is, is so crazy, crazy. <laughs> like a woman's people don't know but if you your hips are actually designed there are two bones that come together and they come apart mm -hmm. our bones separate so that yeah. the head can come out yeah. of you it's co and the cervix di yeah look this up it's nutty it's like where those snakes that can unhinge their jaws <laughs> to eat <laughs> eggs that's a woman's <laughs> hips and your cervix <laughs> dilates to 10 inches and so that a baby's head can come out. It's freaking unbelievable how we're designed. He's <laughs> <laughs> like looking up sexy hips. <laughs> um, maybe like women's pubic bones. Oh, I don't want to go to that. <laughs> Pelvis. Pelvic. That's what it is. Pelvis. There you go. There's two bones. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. That The pubic arch. So that those two parts, they come apart. It's so I feel like once I started watching a few information, educational videos, you know, towards delivery and those are horrible. Yeah, they are horrible. But they made that, me cry. that one thing when I understood <laughs> really. Oh, yeah, because they're the, the woman's like ah, crying and I'm like, oh, oh I didn't like, watch I any bawling. of that. Oh, did God. you watch like birthing videos? Oh, no, like I didn't idiot. watch any. Oh, yeah. Good. OK, go. <laughs> So you watch. So like understanding science. how the body prepares itself helped me. To yeah. calm down. From so, the, I started to panic a little bit before. But you, but you didn't watch birthing videos. No. You just watched like scientific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably my mistake because I would watch videos. I would videos. never watch it even until oh. today. I watched this one of this woman in Australia giving birth in a creek. <laughs> and um, like, you know, <laughs> will you Google that video? Can we play it, Nadav? Do you think 
like get in trouble of a woman plant uh, just, giving birth in a creek oh, you have to see it google on youtube woman gives birth in creek i think it's <laughs> in australia we're not gonna watch it are we yeah <laughs> yeah it's on youtube you have to see this this bitch okay. is okay hold on i'm not gonna say no because i don't like when people any of these look familiar yeah. no don't try go along with the show oh, <laughs> is it this one miracle flood baby no <laughs> women gives birth in river try river I'm so not into it though, just so you know. <laughs> but, but Australia, Australia. She's Australian. It was in the outback. Even during outback. delivery, when he's, the head was starting to come out, yeah, yeah, the yeah. nurse was like, Here, you want to touch it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I said, No. I said, No, too. Because they, they go, Here she is. She put the entire um, like oh. five hour fiasco or eight hours. This is her in the beginning. She's laboring in a tub, just oh, in the backyard, no. out in the open, in the air. Um, and then it, labor progresses no. and she goes oh there she God. is in the creek she's sta- for those of you just listening you got to see this on youtube she's standing in a creek on rocks in a river <laughs> and she's got her hands on this her is knees like the worst setting it's <laughs> the <laughs> dumbest thing you can do is to, i mean wh- but wait is she just a normal person that yeah, chose to go to her. nature she's or? a dirty hippie <laughs> it's not even on the she's, like she's not from a tribe no like. she's just like a regular lady and and she's naked she's pushing the baby out on the rocks in the rainforest in australia and she's like oh it fucking hurts okay now she brought out a mat at yeah, least, yoga mat. <laughs> yoga mat, you dirty bitch. <laughs> like there's dengue fever in the water there's yeah. malaria like it's not Oh, here she goes. What happened to a hospital? (laughs) You gotta be natural. Why aren't you more natural? (laughs) Here she goes. She's touching it to see if the crown, if it's crowned. I mean, here's a baby. She's pushing it out. And no one's helping her. She's doing it herself, which is pretty amazing. Not cool. (laughs) (laughs) This is not cool. I mean, I personally, oh, there's a husband. The baby's all purple and freaked out why am i in a creek now what do you do if there's a problem with the baby <laughs> good luck running to a hospital yeah throw it in the river <laughs> that's what you do <laughs> i don't know that's why they do it there they're like wait a minute <laughs> this baby is not the same color as dad all right i don't know anyways i chose for a med- medicated birth is what they call that Me epidural <laughs> <laughs> i asked you by yeah. the way and you were like oh yes yeah. yes yes all and the I, way and then i said yes yes yeah. yes yeah. yes so when did they give you the drugs when did you get them i waited at home to get as as much dilated as i could handle yeah. at home yeah because it's nicer to be home yeah. you know than in the hospital and the the contractions weren't that bad for me yeah i just kind of did it on the bouncy ball and i i was fine with it so i when i got there i was like five or something dilated oh, wow. already damn so um then w- and five is pretty like progressive, halfway there right? yeah. yeah so uh after like an hour of being there they gave me the epidural nice and then it was just waiting because i guess once they gave it to me it kind of slowed down mm-hmm. but i kind of enjoyed it because i was up all night with the construct construction yeah. constructions <laughs> constructions. <laughs> constructions yes <laughs> yes Totes. um so it was kind of nice ethan and i were just in the room together and we just took a nap like we were <laughs> sleeping throughout the day and i kind of liked it actually yeah i did too i de- they induced me on the second one mm. and then same thing just give you the epidural pitocin and they're like all right lay down mm-hmm. lay on your side lay i'm like great we watched some judge judy and <laughs> yeah not a hoagie and then you know <laughs> yeah so baby comes out anxiety anxiety so that was that's when i that's when it starts to get hard once you actually have a baby in your hand it's like i you don't know what to do and you're supposed to breastfeed (laughs) let's talk about that (laughs) i hate breastfeeding (laughs) i cannot express yeah Let's it's talk to a, talk to Alyssa Milano. She loves it. I know. I heard. <laughs> she, I heard the podcast. You guys are polar opposites. Total opposites. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening and I was like, wow. Yeah. What I you? have no idea what she's <laughs> talking about, <laughs> but it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it made her like calm, I guess. And she feel, loves it. Yeah. yeah Some women love it. it. Some women struggle. So what what was it about it that really everything? Yeah. <laughs> it's so it's hard. everything all of a sudden you have people touching your nipples looking at your nipples telling you like s- touching it and uh, tell you if it's good or bad and uh, i don't i like my privacy yeah and then um you can't wear what you want which 
big problem for me. Yeah. I like wearing this kind of stuff. Yeah. And you gotta all of a sudden wear this like flowy, um, <laughs> easy to pop <laughs> the boob out, yeah. and it's not me at all. So I didn't even feel like myself because I couldn't even wear my own things. Yeah. And which seems like a little thing, but for me it was kind of a big thing. Well, it's your identity. I yeah, think, I it's think... my identity. I don't yeah. like cleavage. Oh, I hate I cleavage. Hate it too. I'm so you and I are. We have that in hate common. It. We dress like boys. Yeah. I think we like to yes. cover it up a little. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think. Um, I think bre breastfeeding kept me in uh, postpartum depression it's longer. It's awful. Yeah, because <clears throat> excuse me. Um. It's not me either. I'm mm -hmm. not comfortable with it, and I wish yeah. I would have tapped out sooner. Mm -hmm. And I, the pressure. I tapped out after yeah. a week. Or <laughs> You're like, fuck that. I wish but I had the I wasn't producing milk, too. So, so that's a on top of everything, it was so stressful. It was crying like the whole first week. It was crying. Oh. It was just crying the whole time because also no one in the hospital is like, oh, maybe you should give him formula. Oh, they don't tell you that. No. And for some reason, we didn't think that, like, duh, the most obvious thing. Yeah. Now we would know. But um, so we, you know, you follow what the doctor says. And they're like, okay, we have this uh, breastfeeding consultant. She's going to come oh, and help the you. Lactation. I fucking the hate lactation those bitches. They're like those consultants. They're so crazy. They're all crazy. And they're all crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, you've got perfect nipples. Yes. Your, your nipples that's what are they inverted. Would, your that's nipples what are, they yeah. kept telling me. And he's latching and you got perfect yeah. nipples. <laughs> <laughs> but he's crying the whole day. Yeah. And then we realized he was starving. Nothing was yes. coming out. Same exact thing happened with Ellis and me. And she even one time watched me breastfeed Ellis. This is like day three of his being alive, day four. She And I go, is it is it working? Because he's really crying. And she goes, yeah. look at him. He's gulping the milk. He's gulping. That was the word she <laughs> used. And I, because I don't ever use the word gulp. I hate it. It sounds stupid. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cool. like <laughs> he's gulping the milk, and I was like, "Well, she's the consultant. Yeah, I guess I should believe her." Yes, and I believed her, and he was starving and crying and mm -hmm. starving and losing weight, and we had to take him yeah. back every freaking day. We did too. Ugh. We were there every day. It was so horrible. I had like I had tears after delivery, and I wasn't even you know you can I you can't walk. You can barely do anything, and you need to drive and go to. Um, <sighs> the hospital and follow up every day instead of just telling you look it's not getting enough milk yeah. maybe try formula. formula well that's what i did by the second kid i supplemented julian with formula until my milk came in because mm -hmm. there's also a lag between delivery yes. and when right. your milk comes in yeah and they're like he can just survive off colostrum you're yeah. he's getting enough from the mom and you're like he's no not. he's not he's crying he's, he's arming fucking give him formula he's not gonna so, die we Ugh. tried we tried doing that we tried to supplement to, yeah. to begin with but he once he got the formula it was like oh thank god food <laughs> like yeah. and then he, he was he wouldn't look at me for breastfeeding mm. after he got the formula he was like no way yeah, he got he a knew. taste of that yeah like the flow of the formula it's like I c something is actually coming yeah. out you know I get so it, man. But that's very taboo in the mom world. I know. What, you're, what you said is tantamount to I, mom treason. I don't, I don't like breastfeeding. Uh-oh. Yeah. I don't only not like it. I hate it. <laughs> Good for you. Well, it's pretty fresh for me, too. Like, it only happened yeah. a couple months ago. So, yeah, I think that was probably the worst part for me of everything. I, I can't agree more. Breastfeeding was more traumatic for me. Oh, and it's painful. I forgot about that. Oh, when your milk <laughs> comes in, it hurts like nothing else. The pain and of to the get him to latch. Oh, getting the latch. The su it's it's a nightmare. Everything. The whole fucking thing is a nightmare. You gotta what you gotta do is the football hold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> football or the cross <laughs> cradle, and you're like, I don't know. My tits are and my big boobs normally. Mm. So when they're engorged, oh. they're I ha I had like quadruple J tits. <laughs> And like, good luck finding a bra for that. <laughs> even come in yeah, I don't let her. Yeah, and then you get it. You, my mother-in-law is there at the house. Oh, look, I got to yeah. breastfeed Julian. <laughs> you know, and like, who wants to see your boobs? You're all fat and bloated. It's awful. It's. And then they tell me, <sighs> okay, broken. keep keep pumping. Maybe keep it will come it. out. Yeah. And they're like, the try word. to pump eight times a day. <laughs> it's like, okay, like I have nothing else to do. I'll just sit yeah. on the couch with a pump. Well, let me tell you how stupid I am, Ela. Is I listened to that, and it became a form of OCD for me actually, because I was really anxious after my children were born, and I, I would start obsessively pumping. 
every four wow. hours, every three hours to get my supply established because I was so freaked out with Ellis. And then, oh, yeah, I got really, my therapist was like, you need to slow down. On the <laughs> I'd set my timer, wake up in the, you know, if they're in the night, you know, Mitzi is, you know, te texting her, come get the milk, yeah. come get the milk. It's two in the morning. <laughs> I and, was out of my fucking mind. And also I had a pump that we bought and they're like, oh, this pump is not, oh, no. it's not hospital grade. You have to get the you hospital can, grade. You can get a new pump <laughs> that will really hurt you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I tried their pump yeah. and still nothing came out. But wow. I, so I, ca I tried it for a couple of weeks and I was like, I am out. Yeah. And also I was feeling anxious and like not well. And... I wanted to get on Lexapro, which is the... 10 milligrams. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Join the Lexapro club, ladies. I wanted to... I've seen Ethan's transformation from yeah. taking it, and I knew that I wanted it too for a while. But while you're pregnant, they recommend not taking it and yeah. breastfeeding. So I was like, I am out. I am not pumping. I'm out on this breastfeeding thing, and I'm taking Lexapro. Good so for you. So on week three, I just... I cut it all and started Lexapro. Good for you. Good for you. Because I, I think a lot of people, I mean, you don't realize you're full of hormones when you're pregnant. You're full of hormones. Yeah. And then in one instant, everything that's inside of you comes out of you, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and you've just hit the floor. Yeah. And now you've got the pressures of this life and the pressure of breastfeeding. Because yeah. societal pressure now to be a breastfeeder, that's the only option. And if you take mm. on the formula, you're seen as a pariah. Whereas in the 1950s, they were telling women the exact opposite. You should only be feeding them formula. That's fine. Breastfeeding is barbaric and cruel. Really? And yeah, 100% in America. Oh, they told women if you've got, it meant you were wealthy huh. and that you were doing the best thing for your baby. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah. So it just, you know what I mean? It's yeah. the trends. It's well, a bit arbitrary. I couldn't care less. I mean, you got to do, <laughs> you got to do what works for you. It wasn't working for me. Yes, yeah, good for and you. And like everyone keeps saying, a baby needs a happy mom. There you go. And I was not happy breastfeeding. And it just wasn't working. So it's yeah. nice to try it. And anyone who's like, you know, about to become a mom or in this position right now, try it. But not at all costs. That's yeah. all I can say. I think so, because I suffered for it. And I, looking back now, I wish I just had the same piece of the, the mind to, to kind of think how you mm -hmm. thought which is like this clearly is not good for me it's putting the me really weird... yeah the really like red flag for me not red flag but when I understood that it's not working and that I need Lexapro was my mom came to visit us for the first two weeks and then when she left I don't know why that like kind of set off something mm. for me and that whole week I was just like not myself I was like crying non-stop mm. for no reason i don't even know why and i clearly was just not functioning and mm. i was like this well this is not good <laughs> <laughs> it's not good and it's no. not good for the baby yeah. and yeah the pressure to be a perfect mom and to it starts in pregnancy right like you need to be eating a certain way you gotta yeah you gotta eat healthy you gotta, <laughs> you gotta do your yoga you gotta, you gotta buy exercise you gotta be perfect don't gain too much weight <laughs> And then you got to buy the right products. You got to get the docket You got to get the wiper <laughs> yes. warmer. Yeah, yeah, you know, it is a lot. There's so much going it's on. It's a lot. And you realize too that um, you can be a good enough mom because that they did. There's a book called The Good Enough Mother. Mm. There's studies about it where actually you're doing a disservice to your children if you're exactly. being the perfect mom. Yeah. You just you got to go with it and do whatever works for you. Yeah, and love them to death and squish them and uh, yeah. you know because they're fucking cute and your kids adorable. Yes. So Nathan is now three and a half. Wait, Nathan, Theodore. right? That's his name. Theodore. Why did I call him Nathan? Sorry. That's your other kid. That's your next kid. Theodore. I don't like Nathan. I don't like Nathan either. Why did I say Nathan? In my head, I heard Theodore. Um, so Nathan okay. is three. <laughs> that's your next kid. And, um, <clears throat> three and a half months. Yeah. So, but yes. I f see, whenever I talk about the bad stuff, I, feel, I start to get guilty. And I feel like. Oh, that was your mom guilt yeah i okay. feel like i shouldn't yeah let's talk about mom guilt so let's talk about that so i have to clarify that it that we love him and of that course. it's amazing and just you know the beginning is really hard but yeah. then you get through it and i feel like where we are now is like just like things just starting to click and like we're like in love with him it's yeah. crazy he, so he sees us and he smiles and that's just 
it's a, it's like the best feeling it's i don't best. know it's just amazing yeah it makes it worth all the stuff yeah and then you get amnesia around when they turn like yeah. 15 months and then you're like let's have number two yeah i can't, I can't <laughs> wait for um theodore and nathan to be best friends <laughs> but i um <clears throat> yeah because my boy i was gonna actually give the moms listening an update my 15 i have a 15 month old now and three and a half year old and they just started playing together oh girl so sweet now it's all worth it all the oh. postpartum depression all the pregnancy <laughs> shit, like it's so dope <laughs> like they um they gang up on me and they lock oh me out of the pantry God. yeah it's so <laughs> much fun and they're running around and tearing it up and i'm like this is why i did it That's this is amazing. what it's about now yeah. I'm actually really enjoying having two because I think mm. too, like you, you have it that second so one. Hard. It's so fucking hard. The second one is crazy because you've got yeah. a toddler and yeah. then you're pregnant with a toddler, which is horrifyingly hard. And then the baby comes and you've got a baby and a toddler. It's crazy. Oh my God. So now it's finally like leveled off. I'm over the hump. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, ladies, just expect it. If you have a second one, if you go in for number two, expect that the first year is obviously going to be yeah. even harder than when you did it the first time oh. so ways. but then it turns and it's awesome yeah now i'm loving it so i yeah i feel like we just had one of those turns where Yay. now it's good it's amazing but the guilt about having um bad feelings about yeah. motherhood isn't it's, that fascinating that it's we so weird it's like you're not allowed to complain and no Never. one said anything to me it's just i immediately like if i immediately feel it inside like, right it's an internal like i'm not supposed to say this yeah right because it's sa motherhood is sacred and mm -hmm. it's been it's been sold to us as um yeah as a sacred duty yeah and you don't complain about sacred duties <laughs> <laughs> right? and also people tell you like oh are you bonding and all this stuff <laughs> and it's like you, we weren't in the beginning right right you you kind of feel like strangers for a while because I don't know we had you know people come over and i had this weird feeling like i don't know even what he wants as the mom you feel weird like not knowing yeah what he wants like you should know the you best should. right in the room you're supposed right. to know the best and now it is like that yeah i do know now like more than anyone i can tell what he wants and how and of how course. to calm him down and how to get him to sleep stuff like that well, because there's a learning curve. Yeah. It's a stranger. It takes time. It's literally a stranger you're bringing into your home and you have to get to know the different cries. And, and yeah. there's like that time where you don't know what the cries are and you're like, no. I don't know what the heck they want. I'm scared. You know? Um, yeah. And then you become the expert and now it's all on mom. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. there's that kind of, then I would get, I got resentful with yeah. Ellis being, being the only one who knew. I would get resentful to Tom. I'm like, why am I mm -hmm. the default parent on everything? And it's because, surprise, mom just is. Like biologically, yeah. and I know there's no gender and I should not assume gender roles here, but the it's fucking- It's not the same. Sorry guys, like the truth is, we have the baby and then yeah. we are tuned to them and their needs better than anybody. Yeah. And mom's just everything. It's funny because we actually had a little bit of the opposite. Like Ethan would get sometimes frustrated because he wants to help and I can see that he's doing it wrong, let's say. And I'm <sighs> like, let me show you. But he's like, but why? I want to do it. And like, why won't it be calm on me? Yeah. But I don't know. It's just in the beginning, some things are just intuitive. And when he's on me, I can figure out what's comfortable for him. And I don't know necessarily how to explain it to you yet. Yeah. Well, right? also baby knows your smell yeah baby knows your sounds your body mm -hmm. like baby grew in you yeah so i think there's just that inherent genetic yeah. like that's that's mama that's you know yeah. that's home and as it should i mean yeah. we did all the work yeah <laughs> all the work they did nothing <laughs> every I, I remind tom every night <laughs> we lay down like last night we lay down in bed and there's two baby monitors you know it's julian and ellis and i literally last night sat down and he was laying in bed and i go i made both of them. <laughs> Me. i created one and two i gave you two heirs to the throne <laughs> look at them you did nothing i did yep. everything <laughs> you should worship me yeah yeah and he does, and he's really sweet about yeah. it. Yeah, but I like yeah. to hold Ethan it over his too. head. He's yeah. really sweet. Yeah, that's <laughs> and that's the key to a healthy marriage, is holding yeah. it over their heads <laughs> every day. Yeah, one time he said something like, "Why, you know, he's a mama's boy or something like that." And I said, "Well, you better be. You better yeah. be. Yeah, you did all I the did everything. You better work. be." <laughs> 
Unbelievable. Okay, so let's get into some mom fails. I'll share mine. Now it's oh, time for a round music. of mom, mom fails. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I've got a few to share with you guys. Um, I mentioned a few episodes ago that my son Ellis, I believe, said fuck it in Trader Joe's. <laughs> we were looking at cheeses and he went, fuck it. And I was like, what? Whoa. Fuck it. And then finally a staffer heard it and started laughing. I'm like, he's clearly saying F it. And then um, I know. And I what was do like, you do? well, that's, I ignored it. <laughs> so then we were in the car yesterday on the way to Michael's Arts and Crafts. And he said it again. So now it's like, it's a full thing. Um, I've chosen to just ignore it entirely. <laughs> I just ignore, and I, I told Tom about it, and he's like, who's saying that in front of him? I'm all, it's obviously me. <laughs> like, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> because my nanny doesn't say F it ever. That woman's a saint, and Tom, I don't think, does it. I say that a lot. I guess That's I'm saying so it. That's so funny. Yeah. I feel like I don't curse. And you're Ethan not a does. cursor. You're not a cursor. How do I get to that place? Um, Were you you got to grow up with parents that yeah, didn't have will that. not allow it. Gotcha. Or else, okay. some you know you gotta fear. How you do you gotta say, have fear in you? Fear the fear of God. How do you say fuck fuck in uh, Hebrew? Is it Hebrew? Israeli? What's the language you speak, Nathan? It's Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say fuck it in Hebrew? Uh, is there a fuck it? I uh, don't. Fuck uh, it. Fuck you. Well, I mean, fuck yourself is uh, tis the end. Lech right? tis the end. Yeah. Le- how do you say? Lech tis the end. Tis the end. How does it feel when you? But say I, that? it feels awful. Yeah. You feel like your mom's gonna yeah hurt you yeah that's good that's good work She's doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all it is is fear and all fear <laughs> interesting that's how you get kids to do what you want fear and control good okay yeah, yeah. um I also too i was picking great we have a grapefruit tree in our front yard and i had the picker and julian and ellis and i were all playing in the grapefruits and i pulled the grapefruit down and another grapefruit came tumbling down and like hit julian like on the side of his head like not spot on and i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god and i was like oh jeez he's fine he's fine he's fine yeah. but i was like oh i'm such an idiot like maybe you don't take the grapefruits down when your children are <laughs> under the tree that's what i got what do you got um What's your it's big- funny when you first asked me if i have any any fellows i was like my first response to you was the last three months <laughs> you're like all of it <laughs> all, all of it, it. Um, I don't know because it's been so soon. It is soon, yeah. Like I had little things like awful. I was cutting his nails and oh. I slightly cut him I hate his that. finger and I felt so oh. bad. It's the worst. It was tiny, but I was like, I could not mm. knowing that I hurt him. I know. It hurts like inside. I know. It's the worst. And the first time your little baby boy gets on um, like a scrape on his knee yeah. when Ellen, like uh, oh, i was so especially the first with the first kid you're like oh my god oh my god he's got a scab he's got a boo-boo and then by the yeah. second kid you're like nah, he's fine it <laughs> falls off it'll turn back <laughs> it'll grow back it's yeah. great. <laughs> you, you get all that anxiety <laughs> out yeah i've done that too i've done that too because it yeah. cuts i cut like too short one time and i yeah. was like oh no my baby i know yeah it's devastating but they it's okay you, you they're feel awful <laughs> they're gonna be fine and they're totally good i have a friend who would um nibble the nails off you can actually just bite them with your teeth really mm-hmm. I, if i didn't have veneers i would do that too you can just nibble what's them veneers off. veneer fake teeth my two oh, okay. are they're yeah. fake My, so i can't I have do that. one yeah oh yeah you do that's right that's another thing we have in common false teeth okay <laughs> um okay so those are mom we have some uh voicemail we have a voicemail yeah. mom uh, and videos good yeah we got some videos you, know, you need your you need your yes. headphones for these great i love videos those are my favorites guys send those in at where my mom's at at gmail.com so uh, we're going to start oh or you could call and leave voicemails at 213-375-5184 in hebrew next time what a language got what, um what is sexual <laughs> it's so not do you and ethan dirty i talk wish i knew <laughs> other languages um, it is a crazy sounding language it really <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like it's awful yeah well, I grew up in a building with a lot of Israelis, and I used to hear, Abba! Ledin! Hala, 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 
Yeah, it's kind of at the pool area, and I'm like, these fuckers are just yelling. Yeah, it's kind. Of, it always seems like everyone is arguing, but yes, it's not. That's what I thought it was aggressive. It's an aggressive sounding language. People are aggressive, but they're not arguing. Oh, yeah. But they're like, get the fuck over here. Yeah. Come on, dummy. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not a fight. <laughs> it's yeah, Hungarians not a fight. are the same. My father used to call me down for dinner, and he said, "Get a zabani bozmeg," which means "come and fucking eat." Ooh. <laughs> but it's more of like. Get a zub on the yes, it's a, it's wow. a hostile sound. It is hostile. It's hostile. <laughs> now, do you and Aton speak Hebrew together ever? No, we don't. Can he speak? He does. Surprisingly, he speaks more than I thought. Like, really? In my mom's last visit, she was kind of talking Hebrew, and he was understanding more than I Dude, thought he would. Can't talk smack about him now <laughs> with mom. Are you gonna teach Theodore? And by the way, she calls. Theodore Little Aton. So funny. Because he looks so much like Ethan. He really does right now. Isn't that upsetting? That makes me so mad when they look like dad. I do really want the next baby to look like me. Nathan. A little girl. Just like you. A little girl? We hope so. <laughs> she will. She'll be but beautiful. Ethan thinks it's going to be another boy. It depends on his shooters. <laughs> it's all in his beanbag. That determines <laughs> the, the bean gender. Bag. Yeah. Well, you could IVF it and then... Mm. for reals just pick and oh. choose hmm. yeah tom and i ivf the second one we had all embryo all of them were boys all so of them. you can't really can't choose. do it can't <laughs> choose no she's like you can do it again to try for i'm like no no <laughs> IVF is terrible i don't want to do that again shoot my butt full of progesterone every day okay let's do um let's start with some videos all right so uh you were talking about how alice was saying things at the uh at the supermarket we got Super some fun. mom fails that are similar to that i love it uh first mm. one is from meg i love when uh toddlers inadvertently curse i love it toddlers so, inadvertently cursing is, is the saying cock trying to say big truck big oh. truck <laughs> big truck close enough kid so that was from oh, meg i, I like his thank you meg <laughs> now our next one is from jess and her kid is trying to say chocolate <laughs> hey arden can you say chocolate yeah fuck that <laughs> <laughs> maybe ellis is saying oh. chocolate i doubt it <laughs> say chocolate old. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Man, my kid's a potty mouth already. This uh, this next one is great. Um, this one's from Ashley, and uh, their kid really likes to eat baked ziti, but uh, they call <laughs> it they call it sloppy lasagna at home. I like it. So the uh, the kid is trying to say sloppy lasagna. <laughs> you say sloppy lasagna. Sloppy vagina. <laughs> <laughs> Sloppy vagina. One oh, more time. That was a good one. Yeah. Sloppy vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I had a girl. That a girl. Oh, I gosh. love these. I, I don't know yeah. why they're so dumb. I feel like that's the best age when they start talking. It's the best. Because then they so can cute. tell you their little, the way their brains work. <laughs> Like today, yeah. Ellis, I drove him to school and he was like, go faster. And I'm like, I can't. It's against the law. He's like, go faster. Come on. I'm like, oh my God. Okay, let's go. So I would like slow down to 20 and then punch it to 40. And he was like, yeah. He's going to be such a dervish. All right, what else we got? All right, we have, a whirling dervish. We have uh, one more video fail and then we have a voicemail as well. For Love. Voicemails. All right, so this next one is from Allison. So I just walked into my daughter's room. To get her up from her nap. Mm. What is that? <laughs> She's pulled out about <laughs> oh. a good chunk of her pillow. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> cool. <laughs> good job, Mom. <laughs> I did that once in um, kindergarten during a nap. I hated napping at school. I hated going to the bathroom at school and I hated napping at school. Mm -hmm. And I pulled out all the foam in my mattress and we had the meanest teacher, Mrs. Dorleen. And she got mad at me and she was like, you're going to clean up all of that. And I remember being like, duh, like I'm terrified. <laughs> Why would you scare me? Yeah. You've got all that to look forward to. And especially yeah. if boys are crazy. And we have two dogs. Like, I yeah. feel like that's going to add to uh, the craziness. How's the new dog adapting? Good. Good. It's sweet. 
It's Shredder and Alfredo. Alfredo. <laughs> Cutie dog. Yeah, two dogs yeah. is chaos, bro. Yeah. Um, is he peeing in peeing in the house? Yeah. Cool. We're we're potty training. But, yeah. Yeah, it's it's okay. He's learning, but there was still poop and pee everywhere. Yeah. So it's cool. You have like a baby and a dog to kick up. I know. <laughs> yeah. It was awesome. All right, what voicemail we got, homie? <laughs> All right, here is a voicemail. Hey, Christina P. I have a mom fail. When my little was a newborn, I did what everyone did and uh, labeled the breast milks appropriately. <laughs> and when I would maybe have Uh-oh. a glass or two or three of wine, I would mark the bag with like a big X or a question mark, but I was so anal that I saved everything for maybe a milk bath or you just couldn't throw the precious gold away. So I kept it all. Then when I was finished breastfeeding, I did not want to give up that precious gold. So I got a little lax with the question mark or X out breast milk and would use it or maybe mix it half and half to dilute it. I thought it was fine. I probably was being super new mom anal anyway, and I really hadn't had that much to drink. So I got to the very end of the batch. I gave him one. He didn't seem super excited to taste it. Uh, I was like, he's fine. I woke him up the next morning, and he had puked all over his crib, and I immediately assumed I gave him, like, alcohol poisoning, and I was horrible, and something was wrong with his liver. So I called his pediatrician. I tell her the story. Probably shouldn't have done that. And she's like, I'm sure he's fine. Da, da, da. Turns out in the next 12 hours, my husband and I both get hit with a stomach bug that was clearly oh. just being passed around the family. Oh. And there was no need to put myself on some sort of a bad mom list that I'm probably <laughs> oh still God. on today. So, that's my mom's deal. <laughs> he's alive. He's 14 months. We're all good. Thanks. Love you. Bye. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> um, I do feel but- like there's a list. There's a list. The bad mom list. <laughs> <laughs> She's on there. I'm on yeah, it. Yeah, you're on it too because you're not doing it. You're you're not you're not keeping bags of your your precious gold, your liquid gold. No, I feel like after today, how I talk about <laughs> breastfeeding. You're totally not you're in the list. You're good. Trust me. There's a lot of women that actually agree with you too. That feel mm. the same way. I feel the same way about you. Uh, about you about about breastfeeding as you do. I think I was just I gave in to the yeah. guilt. And I, yeah. I kind of wish I had more of your, um, like, fuck it, at your mm-hmm. moxie to just be like, ah, I don't really want to do this. But I gave into the peer pressure. I, yeah, I can see why everyone, everyone is like, you got to breastfeed. You got to do it. You it's, gotta and also, do it. just there's people who like it. Like, some people Alisa enjoy it. And we have a friend who likes it. And I guess it's like a different kind of person. I just not. I know. Don't feel guilty. I can see you. I know your wheels are turning. You're like, I'm a bad person. You're not. You're my not. Wheels you're not. are always turning. You know, mine too. It's neurotic. Okay. I wanted to tell this lady um, who, who called about the alcohol stuff in your breast milk. There are actually strips you can buy, moms, that test the um, the the alcohol level in your breast milk there are little strips mm-hmm. you get them on amazon so if you do have a night where you're drinking wine you just go ahead and test it after you pump and it'll tell you if you're in the danger zone or whatever and that's what i did and i would just toss it i wouldn't save it i'd be like that's okay i'll just make more tomorrow <laughs> i don't know i didn't save the liquid gold i was like forget it um okay what do you have any lazy mom moments i mean you're so new i am so new i really yeah. don't have that many moments but um I notice like sometimes when he wakes up at six, I'm so sleepy. Like I sometimes don't remember what I did with him. Like I <laughs> fit him or did I fit him or how much? And then I get all yeah weirded out that I don't remember what happened. I know it's all a blur. It's those all first a blur. Ninety days are just a ho- uh, a blur. Night. Yeah, you're out of it though, girl. You're out of the dark forest. You're almost compl- one year. I think you're gonna be even. Happier. <laughs> um. What was I going to say? Oh, my lazy mom. So just so you guys know, I'm a firm believer um, in backyard entertainment. I mm. believe that uh, I love letting my kids just explore our backyards and be boys and mm-hmm. run around in their diapers. Um, and uh, I That's love cute. the hose. I think the hose <laughs> is probably one of the, it's like a, it's like a rite of passage, right? You must play with the hose. Um, so Ellis and Catch me outside. That's right. How about that? How about that? Catch me outside with my hose. How about that? <laughs> so um, Ellis and I were washing the side of the house last week, and um, 
And I actually got him to get the cobwebs and stuff. I was huh. like, this is rad. I'm like, go get that one. He, we have this little gun on the thing. And he's like, yeah. And then Juju would like jump up and down and clap. And so we washed the whole side of our house. And I got a longer hose on Amazon so that he can wash the entire house. Is that house. how you clean it? You wash? Yeah. yeah. Oh. You can just wash your own house. Oh. I know. We have a white house and it's got like dirt on it and spider webs and i'm yeah. like just shoot the gun shoot the gun and he cleaned like one side so now okay. he's gonna i've got free labor which Genius. is really cool yeah <laughs> Genius. and i just sit there and i cheer him on and laugh <laughs> I, I love it i laugh so hard when he's like yeah he gets so pumped when he does it you know and um juju loves it too so there you go that's my lazy mom moment this week um my mom guilt this week I, oh i have a yeah. lazy moment go for it um lots of uh, lots of them <laughs> uh, theodore loves the car ride yeah so if if we go in the car he just leaves and it's <sighs> like ooh, that's our cheat code like we if we are over it or if we're tired or yeah he's crying and we're like can't do it right now let's go in the car we like that's <laughs> we just great. go for a drive and it's like our babysitter yeah it's it just sleeps oh might i recommend the ultimate babysitter uh the jolly jumper what's now, that that's right now americans are a little weirded out by it but in canada um the canadians listening look this stuff up guys you can get this on amazon um i recommend getting the one with a stand here whoa you put so once the baby can sit up um oh and their, their necks are strong enough you put that baby in a jolly jumper and that's another mommy hack vacation Whoa. again a lot of americans are kind of weirded out i'm not sure why this product as you can see has 691 five yeah. star reviews i've used it for both my kids like i said once they're kind of more i feel like durable. he's gonna love that dude especially a boy yeah. they just get it out and i put like a sound pad under their feet <laughs> so they can make yeah. sounds <laughs> that's funny it is the dopest toy in the world the jolly jumper oh, wow. moms. i'm gonna get that the baby exerciser now don't obviously don't leave them in there more than like 30 maybe 40 minutes at a time i don't mm -hmm. think it's good uh, i don't know personally but that thing is gangbusters he really doesn't like laying down he always oh. wants to be up so that i feel like he would love he that. would dig that if mm -hmm. once he can hold his neck up i'd say yeah. by four months you could probably put him in the jolly jumper and mm -hmm. that'll that'll save you some time um okay what else oh oh um uh, mom guilt i'm having guilt over not reading as much to my second child mm. <laughs> which she's only like 15 months old and i'm con i'm like i'm so anal but i'm so convinced that Ellis loves books, and it's I, I'm convinced it's because I started reading to him when he yeah. was about six weeks old. Like I was, um, I wow. was maniacal about wanting my children to be readers. Yeah. I believe in reading, so now I bought a bunch of stuff on Amazon that I think Julian would like, and now I'm I'm installing a installing. Is that the right word? I'm a brain. I work too much. Um, installing. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to start a thing every day. <laughs> Instill. Oh. Instilling? Yeah, I, I want to do that every day where i read um with with both julian because i do it with ellis every night anyway that's my big i want to do that too i just yeah. kind of started not really i want to though they don't know shit until like <laughs> they're verbal you know yeah <clears throat> i want but, them to get oh, in the habit yeah yeah another thing i really want to speak hebrew to him and yes. sometimes i get guilty that i don't do it enough oh okay we used to have a lot of time i know but i should really i should do it now yeah do you sing hebrew songs to him I I'm very bad. I don't know enough. I'm 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 gonna have to put it on YouTube and learn some Oh learn yeah. some stuff. Yeah, because some kids songs. songs. I don't know. Yeah, I, I know like too. I know like two sentences of a song, you know? Yeah. And then it, it, you sound stupid. <laughs> Like, what am I t <laughs> trying to teach him? <laughs> I was like that too. I remember trying, I'm like, what baby songs do I try singing to my first kid? I'm like, I don't know any. Yeah. <laughs> little, <laughs> but, mm. I would sing Beatles songs to mm. my kids. That's they cool. like the Beatles now. Um, okay, do we have, let's do some mom fail voicemail or oh, videos. Mom hacks. Or mom hacks. These are my favorite. I mm. love mom hacks. Can I tell you, I just tried the one, um, a woman emailed me. You I may want to try this one out too. You get the, um, it's like a plastic sheet cover and you put it over the mattress. So if they have pee pee accidents, vomit accidents okay. in the middle of the night, you don't have to change everything. You just take off a layer. So you can oh. do multiples of like the plastic covering, oh. which is great because Ellis is 
uh, potty training now. Mm. So he pisses all over everything okay. all the time. Um, okay, yeah. So mom hack. Oh, and puppy pads on the changing table. Yes, I do that. Hey, because <laughs> that way you don't have to change the changing yeah. table. Yeah, I still had a whole Sheet. box from Shredder. Yeah. Like I bought it just when he got potty trained, and then we had a whole box still. So dude, I've been using that. that. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. Okay, what do we got? Voicemail. Mom hack. Hey, Christina. My name is Grace Ann, and Thanks. although I'm not a mom. I do have a pretty good mom hack from all my years of babysitting. Uh, So I just finished episode nine, and I wanted to piggyback off of your magic eraser tip. I don't know if you've ever used Goo Gone, but it is a game changer for sticky fingers and, I mean, you name it, stickers, Mm -hmm. gum, mysterious goo, whatever it is. (laughs) It gets it all off. There's no sticky residue left. Um, I even mm-hmm. used it to get what I thought was a bumper sticker, but was a regular sticker sticker off my car, and it didn't take off any of the paint. Oh, so, that's cool. Goo Gone, it is a lifesaver, um, and it doesn't, it's it's just good. Yeah. We yeah. have the Goo Gone. We've used it before. Oh. Um, Ellis was, yeah, a sticker fan. So, there's mm-hmm. stickers on the oven, stickers on Ooh. every, yeah, stainless steel <laughs> item. Yeah, Goo Gone. I love stickers. Me too. Huge fan. It's the best. Um, all right. Oh, oh, the magic eraser. You may want to get that too, that you have a boy. Okay. It's, uh, it'll take off any ink or any um, blood or whatever they I, I need <laughs> that already. Yeah. I yeah. get ink on everything. Oh, yeah. Magic eraser works. All right. What, what do, do we you have? Yeah. Do you have anything for ink on, a, on the bed sheet? Magic eraser. No way. Well, really? Or the Tide sticks I hear are very good. Huh. Those eraser sticks. Okay. The Tide ones I hear are good. Bleach. Because I always draw in bed. Oh. And then I, like, we had this beautiful new set of white sheets and oh. I got black. Oh, <laughs> the worst. <laughs> yeah. What sheets are you using? Brooklinen. They're my favorite. Brooklinen.com. Use promo code mom. That's right. Is that right? Promo code H3. <laughs> 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 okay uh one more mom hack let's get it yep here we go hi mommy christina this is katie i've been a long time fan of yours wanted to give a mom hack mm. this is kind of like a pre-mom hack this is something that my mom gave me a tip because i have super sensitive nipples mm. i was terrified that i was going to be able to nurse my baby i have one he's 12 now so i guess i'm a varsity and she told me, Katie, just go ahead, rough up those nipples when you take a shower every morning with the washcloth. Vigorously just rough up those nipples uh. while you're washing <laughs> your kitty. And so I did that every oh, day when I was pregnant. Did. And nursing <laughs> was sounds... okie dokie. It was perfect. Really? No probs, no pain. So that's my mom hack, and I hope everybody finds this helpful. Love you guys. Ta-ta. And that, Ta-ta there. <laughs> that right there is why I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of dedication. And yeah. she listened to her mom and it worked for her. And that's yeah. great. But no, that's great. I, I'm very sensitive in the nips anyways. So Me too. I'm not a person who enjoys a lot of stimulation there. So I was like, ah, that's fine. You need to rough them up. <laughs> and then you had those maniacs who would tell you, I remember when I was pregnant, they're like, start pumping now. Yes. And you're like, no, I don't want to start pumping now. No, you look insane. What are you pumping? <laughs> yeah, start pumping now. I'm like, no, that's fine, weirdo. How about I just chill yeah. like the our, my last few months to chill before <laughs> yeah. before the storm. Yeah, cuz then what are you <laughs> pumping when you're de- in delivery? <laughs> like cuz you have to once you start, you have to keep your milk supply. You can't go longer than like 4 or 5 hours. So like you're pumping <laughs> and delivery. I don't know. The whole thing makes sense. Okay. Um, let's do a video mom fail. Oh, no, Hopefully. We, no, we got through all of them. Oh, we did already. Sorry, yeah, guys. I am so, I did uh, yesterday. I did, had a long day. <laughs> I'm very tired. I was going to say, hopefully yes. I am just given a little bit of uh, hope to the moms out there who hate it too. I agree. But I have no problem with anyone who loves it. I obviously. just want to say, obviously. Obviously. I, I mean, look. My I, brain is overthinking. Of course. I think, um, look, I advocate everybody's decisions on this show. Like we have Alyssa who loves it. Yeah. And I'm like, great. You love it. We she have you. She did it Don't until like it. two years, right? That's right. She said, so. I have a pedi- my pediatrician breastfed until her baby was like three and a half. Wow. 
So that's, hey man, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. But I think it's important for women to hear that it's okay not to love it's it. It's just not for me. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be. There's no mm. mandate. Your child is going to be fine. He's not going to, yeah. I think he's normal, right? He's fine. He's genius. Well, look, report already. back to us in five years. And I, I feel like he's already like, he's all sound like a kid. It's so crazy. It's pretty awesome. He grew awesome. so much. Yeah. It is awesome. I mean, we get on the show and we vent like uh, the, the truth side to things. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's, pretty much the most amazing thing it you can do. It is the most amazing thing. Yeah. And and I can tell you and Ethan just love him and yeah. It's transformed it's, you guys. <laughs> it's it's amazing. Just today he was texting me like I took the dogs on a walk and he was texting me. I just love him so much. And so oh, he was so cute. Oh, <laughs> like, no. It's it really, amazing. It really cracks your heart open. <laughs> yeah. It's um it opens you up in a way that it's it's also very terrifying cuz you're like yes. I I've never loved anybody as much as I love my children mm -hmm. and they mean the most to me. It's just, it's terrifying. Yeah. I'm not good with the vulnerability <laughs> <laughs> the feelings of like, and also I'm afraid of dying a lot more now. Like I'm fine. We just, we just called our accountants that we want to get life insurance. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden you start thinking about all this stuff. Yeah. Do you have a will? You should get your, no. Oh, you got to do all that shit. Yeah. 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 Do all of it, man. Uh, all right well um thank you for joining ela i'm so happy you came thank taking you time on your for busy. having me please plug your stuff um did i suck no you did amazing okay you did really well are you kidding me you're the okay. best you feel are you are you in your head <laughs> yeah what do you let's talk um, through, let's talk it through what are you so, feeling inside uh just the usual <laughs> <laughs> do you feel this way after you do your own podcast oh yeah yeah you go home i can't you, watch it no, I don't watch myself. Okay. It's crazy. Do yeah, you, that's you, crazy. Are you going to, on the ride home now, are you going to play it back in your head, like what you said and, and kind of... I've So, yes, and I'm yeah. part of me trying to work on it is I'm just going to live it. I'm just going to be like, that's done and I'm done. Yeah. And I'm going to try not to think about it. But Well, you did very well. I think we've had a really fun time. <laughs> I think the listeners enjoyed this very much. <laughs> I think you're fantastic and I, I love your candor. I think it's important to be open. Thank you. I think you did a fantastic job. Don't you dare. I, I do that too, though. I relive. Um, I did this thing for NPR. It was like, Ooh. I did, I don't who knows when it's going to air. It's for This American Life. And I. Oh, I love that. Bald. I was about <laughs> my mother and the dog was recording. And I was like, I, I replayed that in my head all night. I was like, I, oh. love, I love hearing you talk about this stuff. Like when Elisa said that she loves her mom and you were like. <laughs> I could just hear in your voice how oh. opposite you were. Oh, dark <laughs> I, chill. I swear I was laughing to myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's quite a phenomenon. My mom. Man, oh man. Well, if, if it ever airs on NPR, you'll get to hear the okay. in-depth story. Ira Glass. And then Christina thought to herself, she's glad her mother's dead. I'm like, oh no. They're gonna see, the, the guilt you have about saying that you don't like breastfeeding, it's yeah. the same guilt I have about saying I don't like my mom. Yeah. And then I'm glad she's not here to torture me anymore because people yeah. are like, how, do, how what? Like, because they cannot fathom. Like, people that don't, that don't experience the same things you do can't mm -hmm. fathom yeah. that you could have this totally taboo feeling. Uh, feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, people, but if people are honest with themselves, look, do you like being married all the time? No. Do you like your job all the time? No. There's a million things that we love most of the time, and then mm -hmm. there's this percentage of it that just sucks. Like, yeah, it's just life. I, uh, Nothing is perfect. I just started therapy, and that's something that <gasps> I have been talking about: the guilt, the guilt about having negative feelings. Yeah, I guess I have a tendency to feel guilty about stuff, and um, yeah, one of the main things it's very heavy i'm not gonna get into it but with my dad how he passed away last year and it's all, there was like a slight feeling of me being relieved when it happened and then yeah. i felt so bad like why am i feeling like that you know so yeah was he was very all, ill before he passed yeah oh so yeah. it was like and a, he a was getting really hard and mm. like aggressive like we were worried for my mom mm which is quite common. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're kind of relieved that their suffering is over, that yeah. the family's suffering is over. It is a relief. But then 
it feels so wrong right to feel like that right but then what you learn in in therapy is that there's no such thing as a wrong feeling yeah like and i think that's a huge part of this show too is like dude you can feel however you want about anything but how you act is the most important mm -hmm. thing in the world yeah you know like yeah like we can have negative feelings about breastfeeding whatever, but you're still going to cover your bases and feed your kid and oh, be yeah. a good parent right. like yeah they're... yeah i know well i'm sorry but i'm glad you're in therapy <laughs> yeah that's huge mm -hmm. that wasn't a fart that was my shoe did you hear that <laughs> I, I just want everybody to know i did not fart on the show and if i did i would have used the fart mic because you know i'm very <laughs> proud of my wind okay so yes plug your shit teddy fresh Ooh. um there is a collaboration that we just released with rip and dip oh. it is on their website and at zoomies if you want to catch any of that that is a limited time collaboration so get it now while it's here let me tell you this sweatshirt that's on the teddy fresh is the name of the brand google yeah. teddy fresh the color block sweatshirt i wore this on the last episode of your mom's I house saw. <laughs> sick so as a dog i look like shit my hair was all crazy but the sweatshirt looked great <laughs> and you know what i love about that sweatshirt is that it's the, the fabric is so, it's so thick it's wonderfully yeah. thick and it covers a multitude of sins so if you're <laughs> i love if it. you are hiding baby weight it's kind <laughs> of like the best sweatshirt for that and, and fall is here so definitely scoop yeah. that up. and what and, else um, i have a little scoop that on when is this releasing like next week Wait, oh, right native okay. yeah tuesday okay so by monday. that time monday monday this color block hoodie will be out in new colors <gasps> <laughs> what yes and there's gonna be a barbie colorway which is pink and like it's got like i called it the barbie colorway i love it and when is that on sale i'm gonna buy it friday this but, Friday. but you don't need to buy it because I'll give it to you. Are you sure? Yes. I know that I've been promising you a package for so long and I haven't done it. You've been busy. That's one of my mom guilts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I forgive you. I know you're very busy. I look forward to receiving them. I will wear, yes. I love all your gear. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of you and Ethan and they Thank love you, you so much. We're huge fans of you and Tom. You kind of like saved our life last Aww. year. No, you guys yes. saved your, your own lives. You saved yourself. You guys, you both gave us like the best advice and you were just oh. kind of like an awesome, cool couple. And oh, I like that. You gave us hope. And oh. Yeah, we we love you guys. Oh, we <laughs> love you too. You're my favorite. You're my fucking favorite. <laughs> I just love you because you're such like a low-key inspirational mm. hero. <laughs> you know, you're like the lowest. Li and, and you know what I love most about Hila? is that she can wear the dorkiest <laughs> stuff. She's one of those people who can make anything cool. Like, you know, you, look, look what she's Ark. wearing. What are you wearing? It's Noah's Ark. <laughs> it's the lamest, but it looks <laughs> cool on you. If I wore that, people would be like, what? Is she mentally ill? Is she challenged? Where, where did you even get that? On Etsy. Etsy. And yeah. the necklace? The necklace is... Um... Prada. Okay. <laughs> okay. H3 money. I like to mix it up. I wear like yeah. something that costs $15 yeah. and then something that cost a few hundreds. That's very smart. And that's your, is that I your, love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. That's, that's your fashion guy. Line. That's my thing. I like to, I like, uh, we were going out to a really fancy dinner in New York and I swear my whole outfit maybe cost $40, but then I had really expensive shoes on. Aha. And that's my thing. I love it. <laughs> that's a really cool tip from a cool yeah. girl. You're definitely a cool mom. I would say can I we have a cool so. mom drop for Miss Ela because she's a legit cool mom. <laughs> Not a regular mom. You're yeah. legit a cool mom because you and I walked through the mall a while yeah. back and we were looking at shoes and stuff. And I'm like, Ela, is this cool? And you're like, no. Or Ela, is that cool? Yes. Yeah. Look at these shoes she's wearing. This is look a cool this. shoe. <laughs> Because it's I'm not it's like a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. <laughs> but describe the shoe for people just listening. Why do I love it? It's super affordable. It was only like $100. You can find okay. it on their website. It's not it's some Nike. like you got to go to the resellers and it's all hype. No. And it looks like something your dad would have had. 
20 years ago. A hundred percent. It's a total dad boner shoe. <laughs> yeah. It's neon yellow and black. It, it is. It's ugly. Hideous. In the best way. In the best way. <laughs> and that's your, I feel like that's part of your philosophy. Yes. It's like, it's hideous. <laughs> but when you, but it's also with, because Tom and I were dissecting this. Like, why oh, you do were. you have this? <laughs> because if I put it on, I just look like a crazy person. And how come when you put it on, and but I you can pull essence. off you can pull off stuff that i could never and yeah. i love it you can wear like a red dress oh uh, no dresses. okay no but i do like like because <laughs> i feel like i look too womanly i feel like i, I don't no. like the attention but you you Oof. wore not not a dress you wore like a, a romper a, i love rompers and there you go huge romper fan i have so many and it, yeah. it looked really beautiful thank you, thank you. you. i appreciate that so that's your advice is to wear something low cost and then like a pop of something yeah. high yeah. class. Yeah. I agree. That's a really cool thing. Just throw in there like one expensive accessory. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive, but that's just how I like to like differentiate, you know, make the difference um, mm -hmm. between it. I need so, you to style me. Will you help me? Let's do it. I need help. I have a special. I want to see your closet. I saw like a hint of it in one picture you sent me. Yeah. It's not that great. It's not, yeah, mine is not either. Well, because I'm like, um, I like to wear the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. So I'll buy five of the same sweatpants and then I'll, I'll really? get them really bad that no, way. I you can't multiples. do that. That's I something know. a guy would do. I know. I'm a guy. I'm Ethan would do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the Superman closet. It's, yeah. it's the same outfit every day. Well, I think some of it's <laughs> having gone to Catholic school and wearing oh, a uniform. Oh, you went to Catholic. And I love the uniform, the ease of just like, I know what I'm wearing. It's either gray or blue skirt, Oxford collar shirt, clean, sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Like I would wear a uniform if I could. I would wear, you know what I would really want to wear? Yeah. Can you make mechanics coveralls cool? Because I love that. Me, can yes, you make a Teddy I'm gonna, Fresh? I'm going to make that, yes. But like a girl's mechanics coveralls. Yeah. I literally want to step into a suit, yeah. zip it up and like, and have pockets. Why the fuck yeah, are there? And I, well, the Teddy Fresh has pockets. This is pockets. Yeah. I want utility and form. Yeah. Okay. It's on. You got it. Okay. Um, Eli, is there anything else you wanted to last parting words for the audience? Everyone thinks you're a bad person because of your breastfeeding. Yeah, I'm stuff. sorry. You're a horrible I'm person. I'm going to hell. <laughs> no, you're not. But I'm going to hell and I'll have to breastfeed for <laughs> my for eternity. <laughs> That's <laughs> totally. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 100%. That's your punishment. Now. Yeah. No, you're not a bad person. You're a wonderful person for sharing your feelings, which are neutral. They're not Hopefully neutral. you can relate. There you go. And check out Teddy Fresh and the H3 podcast. Yes. And I love you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I love you too. Right. Bye, mommies. <laughs> Bye. Mom's where my mom's where my mom's at. Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at. Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's where my mom's at.